This video is for anyone who feels like they're on a really low calorie diet, that they're being really, really good, but they're still not losing weight. I'm going to tell you the story of Starving Sally, who is in exactly that situation, and I'm going to explain why she's not losing weight and what's been going on. So, Starving Sally, she does a bit of research, decides that she knows what calories she should be on to lose weight. She thinks that she's calculated it, so she's going to have a 500 calorie deficit a day. And she puts herself on a 1200 calorie diet per day starting Monday. So she's really good at tracking, she thinks. She's done four weeks of this and she's really pissed off because not only is she not losing weight, she thinks she actually looks worse, if anything. She feels deprived. She is just completely pissed off. And so she decides she must be in starvation mode. So what's going on? All right, so St Sally has calculated her deficit, decided to start her diet on Monday. Several days before that, she realises she has loads of bad foods in the house and she needs to get rid of them. So she spends several days before her diet on a pre-diet cupboard clearance of eating all of the naughty foods so she can't be tempted during her diet. On the weekend before her diet starts on Monday, she has a pre-diet treat on the Saturday night of lasagna, garlic bread and tiramisu and a glass of wine. Sunday, she has a Sunday roast with all the trimmings and another glass of wine because the diet starts Monday. What she doesn't realise is she's put herself in a massive calorie surplus right before her diet starts. Monday, she's really, really good. First day of diet. She's actually under her target calories. She had no breakfast. She had a salad for lunch. She had fish and veg for dinner. She was starving. She was tired, but it was worth it. Tuesday to Friday afternoon, she's also really good. She has a yogurt for breakfast. She has salad for lunch and she has fish and veg for her evening meal because carbs are bad. Friday evening, she's been really, really good all week. So she has ice cream with dinner. Saturday and Sunday, well, it's the weekend. So she's good in the day, but she allows herself treats in the evening. She has a takeaway and wine Saturday night and Sunday she has a roast and wine. Monday, she's back on the diet. So she does this for four weeks and she's made no progress. And this is when she concludes she might be in starvation mode. But what she doesn't realise is her Friday to Sunday extras were an excess of several thousand calories. So over the week, she's still in a calorie surplus, not a deficit. And as if that wasn't bad enough, her weekday calories are so low that her body has started breaking down muscle for fuel. Her protein intake's low, she's not exercising, so her body has no stimulus to retain or build muscle. She's avoiding bread, pasta, rice, etc. in the week because carbs are bad. So she's tired and she's not really doing much movement. But she forgets all this conveniently on a weekend. She has ice cream, cake, pizzas, Yorkshire puddings with a Sunday roast. So her weekdays, she's cutting out complex carbs that could fuel activity. And on the weekend, she's consuming delicious, high calorie, high carb, high fat mixes as treats. She thinks she's in a calorie deficit because between Monday morning and Friday afternoon, she feels hungry and she feels deprived. But in reality, her Friday evening to Sunday evening intake is cancelling out her weekday deficit. Plus, as she's massively under eating and then massively overeating, her body's metabolism and her hormones aren't functioning effectively. They're not functioning optimally. So what should Sally do instead? I'm going to now take you through a few things that she could do to have a much better approach, which is much more likely to result in success. Firstly, 
no pre-diet binge. If you want to do a cupboard clear out, throw the things in the bin, don't eat them. Don't have a big treat meal before you start. Again, by doing this, she put herself in a massive calorie excess. Regarding each day, a consistent deficit rather than what she thinks is five out of seven days, but actually is more like four out of seven days because she starts her weekend on a Friday evening. So she thinks she's in a deficit every day with a little treat. Actually, it's almost 50-50 really. It's like four and a half days and two and a half days. And the two and a half days of excess are way cancelling out the misery of the weekdays. Then, regarding the deficit, it's important to understand that the deficit can come through activity, not just through food. So steps, cardio, resistance training. When Sally set up her deficit, assuming she'd calculated the correct maintenance calories, she was correct in looking at a 500 calorie deficit each day of the week as a target, making 3,500 calories across the week, which should mean a pound of fat loss a week. However, that doesn't have to come from food. And if you take too much food out, you're not really going to be capable of doing anything and functioning. Another thing that she could do, and I would advise doing, is to set and stick to a daily step count target. When you're in a diet, it's really easy, if you're in a deficit, to stop being as active as your body's functioning is going to be down-regulated. It's going to tell you to move less to preserve energy and cancel out your deficit. Also, plan and track food and drink intake each day to understand what you're consuming. This was, of course, something in this example that Sally wasn't doing. She didn't realise. She felt like she was in this massive deficit Monday morning to Friday afternoon, but because she wasn't actually tracking, she didn't realize quite how much she was consuming in these treats on Saturday, Sunday and Friday night. Also, when I say track the intake, food and drink. So for example, if in that example, Sally was only tracking food, she would be missing out if she's having any cream in coffee, she's missing out her wine calories, etc. So plan and track your food intake and your drink intake. The other thing that Sally was doing wrong, she wasn't trying to do anything to preserve her muscle and that is so, so valuable for health. So should look to preserve muscle through consuming sufficient protein and by doing resistance training, so weights. Sally also was thinking carbs are bad and she wasn't including complex carbs and you need complex carbs to give your body energy for brain function and also for moving about. If you don't have any carbs unless you're truly in keto, you're going to feel pretty miserable and sluggish. She also Yes, she was having fish in the evening, but she wasn't actually doing this as a kind of targeted approach. It just happened that she was having fish in the evening. What she should be doing is thinking of including healthy fats for hormone function. Also, she was just having treats whenever and wherever. And firstly, if you were going to have a treat, it should be a measured treat, not an unmeasured excess. And secondly, just being in a calorie deficit for a few days really isn't enough to deserve a treat. It's just not fair, but sorry, that's that's how life is. If you've got a bit overweight from having too many treats, then you should be capable of going more than a few days without needing another treat. Also, if she does feel like she needs a treat, in this scenario, she should look for non-food based treats. So instead of looking to have a large meal as a treat, and in this case, she had three large meals as a treat, um, 
she should be looking to find something that she can reward herself with that's a non-food based reward or if it did have to be a food based reward a far smaller one that had been worked into her overall deficit the next thing she'd only given herself four weeks you need to give it time so four weeks may well not be enough to see any change whatsoever if you were embarking on some kind of a fitness regime you should feel fitter and healthier with that time but the approach that Sally has been taking here firstly it wasn't likely to have a positive response anyway but secondly even if you embark on a diet four weeks may not be enough for your body to drastically change and lastly consult an expert for an individualized approach and targets what Sally had done here she just gone on to the internet had a bit of a play around thought she knew what she was doing and as we've just seen she didn't if you consult an expert you'll get an individualized approach based on your individual body your individual circumstances and your individual goals unfortunately a lot of these random targets are not accurate for individuals and especially this is the case for women who are more complex than men especially over 30. we have smaller bodies we're less muscular and we have hormonal and menstrual considerations so i hope this helped of course if you need more help then just drop me a message to find out a little more about how i could potentially help you but other than that, if you have any questions, just contact me if you want to know more about anything that I've covered in this. Just drop me a message and I will be happy to help. Thanks for watching.